From UFOs to psychic powers and government conspiracies, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Here are the facts. You may not have heard of Thomas Galen Hieronymus before. Depending on who you ask, he's either a kook or a pioneering scientist. Over the course of his life, he spent years researching something he called eloptic energy, a force that shares many similarities with the orgon theories of Wilhelm Reich. For skeptics, the concept of orgon has been conclusively debunked, and any similar ideas are also considered pseudoscientific. But, as Hieronymus's advocates argue, he discovered something else, something they swear is real. Here's where it gets crazy. We've covered the work of Wilhelm Reich and his claims regarding radionics or orgone in an earlier episode. Many of Reich's claims share similarities with those of T. Galen Hieronymus. Hieronymus called this discovery eloptic energy, which he described as a type of radiation emanating from all materials. Like Reich, Hieronymus built machines that he claimed were able to both detect and influence this radiation. Unlike Reich, Hieronymus was able to gain a patent. The patent was awarded in 1949 after three years of scrutiny by the U.S. Patent Office. Officially, it's known as Patent 2482773, the detection of emanations from materials and measurements of the volumes thereof. The legends surrounding the machine can often be traced back to John Campbell, an editor of Astounding Science Fiction in the 1950s. When Campbell received word of the patent, he contacted the inventor and the two began a regular correspondence. Campbell was convinced that the Hieronymus machine really could, through some unknown process, affect objects, including humans, remotely. In time, he went further with his claims, writing Hieronymus to say that the machine worked when he simply drew the circuits on a piece of paper. For those who believe that Hieronymus's claims are legitimate, this patent proves their case. But what is the machine supposed to do exactly? Its design is not complex. A sample well for the substance to be examined, a few adjustment dials, some relatively simple electronics, indicators, and a stick plate, which is supposed to produce a physical sensation on the operation hands when certain conditions are reached. So how does the detection and influence of this eloptic energy affect the real world? In an interview with Hieronymus, the inventor details several trials alleging that he was able to grow plants in darkness, kill corn ear worms, and more, all with the use of this machine. There are also numerous rumors about the machine, including claims that the U.S. Air Force and tape manufacturer 3M both contacted Hieronymus at one time or another, asking for his assistance. Yet there are several reasons for skeptics to dismiss the Hieronymus machine. First, extraordinary claims require extraordinary testing and proof. Despite the inventor's efforts to garner academic recognition, there has been no peer-reviewed serious research of the machine's purported abilities. Second, the modern advocates of this machine exhibit several suspicious tendencies, including claims that the machine can fix an enormously wide range of problems. These claims go far past the inventor's original ideas. For the skeptics, the Hieronymus machine is just another example of pseudoscience, peddling fake miracles to the gullible and desperate. To the believers, however, including those who have built their own machines, the blame lies in academia. Several scientists, including physicist and Nobel laureate Dr. Arthur Compton, examined the machine but refused to continue any research into it. Why? Is the principle behind eloptic energy quack science, or is it something they don't want you to know?